relationship is say for instance a patient tries to seduce a therapist because uh, she, maybe she was abused as a child and therefore she thinks that all men are there to seduce her so she, she automatically seduced them because she thinks that's what they want if the therapist does not control their countertransference and and responds to the patient's seduction all he's doing is continuing the damage and ruining any potential form of therapy for the future if on the other hand he remains entirely professional is aware of his own countertransference does not respond to it now remember countertransference it's morally neutral to find a patient attractive it's what you do about it that matters and and if they control it and do not respond then the patient themselves will start forming a new transference and they'll go oh okay this is a man okay he's a therapist but he's a man who isn't seducing me he's respecting the boundaries that may mean it wasn't my fault in the past what happened it may mean that other men could respond the boundaries i don't have to try and seduce mm. everyone so it is a duty of the therapist and not the fault of the so there's two, there's two things I want to bring up. I'm going to give you a scenario in a second. But the other one is, if you, if you consider these professionals that they are human beings, all right? Mm-hmm. Um, and they're going to, and the thing is, a pro, a, a, even a professional is going to ha- go, ha- go through his own mental challenges, whether it's ego, whether it's depression, whether it's loneliness, which is one of the, um, one of the symptoms of depression, or leads to depression. Um, can, and, cause, can cause depression you know, and, as a result And the thing is, if you think about companionship or connection is one of our biggest human needs, How, you know, uh, according to... It's the main emotional According need. to Maslow, actually. Mm-hmm. Although it's interesting because um, some neuroscientists have proved Maslow wrong in some ways. In fact, Maslow put um, connection um, higher up the pyramid, or his, his pyramid of high, um, what's it called? hierarchy of needs. Whereas some neuroscientists have actually said, actually, that connection is actually is, 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 it comes under the survival thing of of being very integral, mm-hmm. because, for example, a mother who has a baby, if it doesn't connect with a child, that child will die. So the child has to connect, or, the, or it, it, whether in the animal kingdom or not, has to connect with the mother in order to be able to for the mother to be able to be responsive to. And it. that's the unit. And then, of course, we're all tribal because nature worked out millions of years ago that living as a tribe meant we're more likely to pass our genes to the next generation than roaming the plains on the savannah alone. Yeah, so, so in some ways um, you have to sympathise with them because the thing is there are boundaries and the thing is you, you looked at this whole Me Too campaign for example and do you know there was an MP I think I can't remember his name now Michael, is it Michael Fallon? David Fallon? I can't remember he, you know he was a very good Tory MP and he did have an inappropriate sexual relationship with a member of his staff because it's not supposed to happen and you know it happens countless now at that's times power differential that's why it shouldn't have happened well the thing is a professional is in a position of power when he's dealing with a Correct. patient because Spot the thing on. you know it, but it also happens with students and teachers yes. and, and this is, yep. and, and that's not an uncommon scenario it happens over and over again and for everyone that's got caught you got to imagine how many of them haven't got caught mm. um, because we we only see the tip of the iceberg so you know so we could we always we judge these even doctors understand this so poorly that 25% of doctors think it's appropriate for a doctor to have a relationship with a patient under certain circumstances 25% so it, it, and that's wrong it's never okay no so so but let me so but so before i hit my scenarios i'm going to hit you with a scenario in a mm. couple of minutes because i i i found it hard to deal with so with technology the way it is now in this day and age is it not more appropriate, um, or, albeit that certain doctors are going to have to deal with undress, for example, but not necessarily in the psychiatry world, but, you know, general practitioners and things like that, is it worth that if you actually can't actually have a second person in there for whatever, financial costs or whatever, like a nurse when the doctor's dealing with a female patient, is it, is it, is it technology going in the way where it actually, can actually be recorded? Or should it be recorded? You see, that's the difficulty, isn't it? Because pa- patients may not want to be recorded if they're having an intimate examination. Um, I know that um, in certain academic settings, uh, therapy is routinely recorded. But again, some patients are not comfortable with that. Um, you know, how many people will get a little bit edgy if, if you start writing something down, let alone of, recording Of course, it? of course. And this is where I'm going to hit you with a scenario. So... 
A few years ago, I used to go on to a regular training course, um, and it was to do with speaker trainings and other sort of trainings, um, very experiential, and you know, the, the courses were great, and there was this one girl on the course who was younger, and she used to, I would say she was quite provocatively dressed, short skirts, showed a lot of cleavage, and you know, there was, I, I did hear other women making comments about her, not P- to her. Pirouetta. Yeah, sorry, a what? That, that's a term one of my old teachers used to call, use, which is called a pirouetta. Right, okay. So, and, and so women did, did, actually women did discuss her. Um, and she obviously overheard it or gone brought to her attention and for some reason she came and spoke to me about it uh, about oh you know I've got people talking to me about how I'm dressing and they think I'm a slag or a slut or whatever things like this and um, you know I'm probably the least person uh, the last person she'd have come and talked to because I'm not the most sympathetic I'm not the most empathetic person when it comes to those sort of things what was your what was your well the the, the thing is do you know do you know what the thing was I um, and here's here's the scenario the, 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 the bone crunch of the scenario for me because I was uncomfortable in her company why did uh, 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 okay, let's hold that that is your counter transference yeah. now why what do you think her transference was to you why did she come to you what did she see in you that made her think um, well my, my daughter would come sometimes it was probably only about 10 at the time so maybe there was a father figure thing that she saw me as or whatever so I, I, she was looking for a father figure mm-hmm. and what made you uncomfortable about her? Well, made me uncomfortable. Well, um, I'll tell you. I'll tell you in a second. Actually, I mean, I, well, made, actually, well, I'll tell you what made me uncomfortable was, and this was cognitive dissonance. This was an unease. This was, uh, I felt she was attention seeking. She was looking that I was going to pacify her on, pacify her. Whereas, actually, I was going to say, actually, if you don't, if you, do, if you're going to be provocatively dressed, you're going to provocate attention from either one side or the other. So, she, so she, either people are either going to be attracted to it, but on, but, uh, but people on the other side are going to actually be, well, not offended, but um, are going to see it, are, are going to react the opposite. So you didn't like being for being uh, forced into a mold of being a caring pacifier. Yeah, you, you wanted to be your normal Jeremy Clarkson like well, self, uh, giving it straight. No, no, I don't like Jeremy Clarkson. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Really you, you want to be direct and honest. You know, but the thing is, if she, if she look, if she likes, if she likes the attention from other men or from other people, that she is attractive, and she and she probably had that need to feel attractive, then. Do you know that that's a, that's a plus because if that boosts hold on a second if that boosts her ego or that boosts her image because I mean she wanted to be found sexually attractive was one reason the other side of it if uh, the consequences of that is that other people are going to criticise her for that she's going to weigh up weigh that up and make a decision you see, you see the point so either this. way it doesn't make a difference the, to me the point is this one of those one of those young Russian ladies in Knightsbridge couldn't care less if people talk negative about them call them a slag because they know what they want this lady was not comfortable she dressed in that way she's not stupid everyone's got a level of self-awareness more, and more than people think she knows in advance look before even she dresses how people will respond to her so why did she come to you knowing that she would be criticized why do you think she came to you I, 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 I don't know. I, I, I'm still not sure. I just don't know. Maybe she was looking for a, a passive answer, but maybe she wanted attention from someone who um, is not norm- a, a lot of people engaged with, maybe and a lot of people engaged with you to seduce her. No, well, actually, and, and maybe that's what made me to feel say, uncomfortable. You know what? Oh, okay. And maybe that's what made me because feel you're an honourable man who's married with a daughter. Um, non, no, 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 not necessarily. The reason it made me feel uncomfortable. Look. Do you know when? Because you wanted to. You, you actually know, wanted you know, to. No, 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 no. It wasn't actually far, far from it. Far from okay. it. I found her. Um, um, I'll, I'll, uh, God, I'm really going to struggle with this one here, and I'll, I'll be very honest, and, I'll, and it's going to draw some criticism. This is. You see, I, I'm this ex-rugby playing 
ex-policeman, ex-banter with the boys. So when, you know, so I, I was probably in my younger days more open to locker room, locker room talk, if you want to. Um, the reason why I found it is because I, I, you know, when I'm when I'm with the lads or when I'm with the boys, I suppose, when I was younger, you know, you can make crude comments. And the thing is, whatever I say, even in jest or as a joke, can be misinterpreted by certain people. And I saw her as a bunny boiler, and the bu- the term bunny boiler was it came from the film Fatal Attraction. So you saw her as being deeply needy. Yes, and. Um, being in her company would have been would have put would, unpredictable would have put me yes unpredictable and in a compromising position well actually it would be predictable yeah. because she was deeply needy and she wanted she, to she form was. an inappropriate attachment and the thing and one of the things was that whenever I found myself alone in her company mm. I all uh, in fact is if I was in the room alone with her or whatever I avoided being in the same position alone with her at any cost okay. at any cost so that is in some uh, so there, there is a possibility and I only say this slightly because we're stereotyping and we talked about stereotyping but the typical type of person may be what we call a borderline personality disorder well I'm going to talk because I'm giving you the cruncher mm, here yeah? so okay. I haven't given you the, I haven't given the deep down um, so something wasn't sitting right and because, I, because, and because the thing is I do judge people it's what I do for a living because I judge people because the market judges you so therefore I give you a reflection of how the market judges you so I can see both sides of it which is how I'm able to interpret that that's what I do for a living that, mm-hmm. so by being in her company anyone seeing it from the outside could either say oh them two are getting close or actually this looks uh, and whatever comment she could say from that based on the image that other people would see could paint a very negative picture um, and I wasn't willing to do that and I've, I've done it on several other occasions I mean I was a scout leader for example I helped out I volunteered with the scouts I would never be you know if we went out with a, with the scouts I'd never put myself in a position where I was in a toilet alone with one boy or, or a couple of boys I would always make sure that they all went to the toilet first if we were in a park or something let them all come out and then I'd be the last one to go in I would never put myself in a position that could in a, that could potentially cause a situation that other people would misinterpret because and I, and I, and I used this example before when someone uh, because I do have quite conservative values and um, you know as the left wing are very liberal in saying in calling people racist uh, and I shared this experience with you before when someone called me a racist not that I am and not that you could ever prove because I've got plenty of evidence to suggest otherwise however if I, I, I turn around to them, are you a paedophile? And the reason why, and he says, well, of course I'm not a paedophile. And I said, why would you say that? That's slander. I says, well, no, I've seen you talking to a, I've seen you talking to a child. Therefore, why shouldn't I assume if you're a paedophile, if you can assume that I'm a racist? Mm-hmm. And based on that, and based on that picture, and I'll give you another scenario. Sorry, I'm hitting you with a lot of different scenarios. Well, here. let's let's focus. Go back. No, no, I'll, I'll hit you with one lady. more. I'll hit you with one more because it was, it's quite relevant. I remember there's. Um, I used to work locally, um, sometimes in a coffee shop, and I would grab a sandwich. And the, you know, the lo- the weather's lovely over here right now. I'd go down to the park. I would, l- and it was a park that my daughter used to play in. And I would eat my sandwich, and I would sit on a bench alone eating my sandwich with a little playground where there's lots of little kids playing in the playground which my daughter used to play and I remember smiling because there was an anchor there I remember the days where I used to take my daughter when she was younger and it was sunny and oh, I felt good and I smiled now anyone seeing it from outside from a, from a different your point of view yes from a different point of view and so, much, so much about talking about men and women but having so much talking about from a different point of view had someone seen that, they'd have probably seen, oh, look, he's a dirty old man and he's, and he's checking out the kids. And that would have been their transference to you uh, exactly. based on the problem of but that's what, that's what happens, right? That's what happens right now. And as soon as I, as, uh, and as soon as I felt that, because I'm quite aware of that, I grabbed my sandwich and I walked away. Mm. Now, had I been sitting there with my wife, it would be a very different scenario because the dynamics have changed. Mm-hmm. So in terms of this girl, going back to this girl, so 
I felt uncomfortable being in the company. I I found out later, not that particular, not that particular point. I found out a few days later that she had been severely raped and abused as a child. Through a letter. Okay, and because of that, I felt even more uncomfortable being in her company because I felt she had some emotional. Cha- I felt she had some emotional challenges, and sure enough, um, a situation.